residential, commercial or industrial development projects, visit our website lencogroup.com.au or give us a call today on 1300 152 626. Football Nation Radio. Do you spend too much of your valuable time in the kitchen? Chef Good delivers delicious gourmet meals directly to your door. With options as varied as green sambal chicken, Nonna's lasagna and harissa lamb tagine, you'll never get bored or go hungry. All FNR listeners can get 10% off their first Chef Good order. Just head to chefgood.com.au and use the code FNR10. Chefgood.com.au. It tastes good. Building or renovating a home? Sick of searching through showrooms looking for the perfect fittings and fixtures in your budget? Renovatorstore.com.au has over a thousand products to choose from. Browse through the catalogue in the convenience and comfort of your own home. From basins and shower sets to lighting and floorboards, Renovator Store has it all. For a limited time, FNR listeners can get a further 5% off by using the promo code FNR at the checkout. Take your reno budget further. Go to renovatorstore.com.au, promo code FNR. Hold on a minute. You're saying the Realme 7 Pro can now access 5G? Realme is quickly becoming one of the most popular and affordable phone brands. With a 6.4 inch display, 64 megapixel camera and 128 gigabytes of storage, we've found your next phone. Usually $599, it's now on sale for $479. And get a further 5% off when you use the code FNRME on any Realme product. Order the Realme 7 Pro now and get a pair of wireless earbuds, the Realme Buds Q, for free. That's realme.com, promo code FNRME. Are you looking to change your destiny in life? Be your own boss? Start your own business? If you are, you need people who understand your needs and are committed to helping you make it happen. At DKP & Co Chartered Accountants, we are more than just accountants. We are business advisors, taxation consultants and strategists that specialised in setting up businesses. We understand the client and give them the very best customised advice and strategies to achieve their goals. Visit our website, dkpco.com.au or give us a call today on 03 9023 9370. Fast, proactive, personal. That's DKP & Co Chartered Accountants. I think last week, the 10-man performance in the preliminary final was absolutely exceptional, so I'm going for the Knights. Now when you talk of Knights, it's a real fighting team. Muscock into the back of the net, Melbourne Knights take the lead, 1-0, Melbourne Knights will win the Doherty Cup. for a finals berth, that's it! The Croatia fans salute the goal that could be so vital. And good evening, Knights fans. Welcome back to the Night Train, where we'll be discussing everything and anything Melbourne Knights. I'm your host, Anthony Zovac, and I'm joined by my co-host for the year, Josh Parrish. Josh? What a win. What a win! Bang! <laughs> bang, bang, bang! We're we back. back. We're back. How good? Mate, look, I've been buzzing since Friday. <laughs> been bouncing around. Vibe around the club is banging. What can I say? What can I say? I'm over the moon. What a win on Friday. What a result. All the fans came out. We're out in numbers. Seen a great team performance. Squad top to bottom. 
I'll, I couldn't be happier, Josh. I'm just relieved you got your voice back in time for the show. <laughs> Oh, look, mate, it was looking a bit hairy yesterday <laughs> afternoon. I was a bit worried by a couple of a couple of cups of tea before I went to bed, and we're ready and right to go. We've got a jam-packed show tonight. We'll be going through some junior news and discussing, obviously, the result from Friday coming into the week next week for our first home game of the year against Dandy Thunder and go around the grounds and discuss the results elsewhere. So we'll just kick things off with a bit of junior news. Uh, juniors made the long trek to Bendigo on Sunday. Our under-14s won 4-0, a hat-trick by Yeshak and a goal by Noah Vugdiela. A big shout-out to Yeshak after scoring a hat-trick, fell heavily on his wrist late in the game and currently awaiting news if he requires surgery. So unlucky for the young fella, wishing him a speedy recovery if he does. Always unfortunate to hear that, especially after scoring a hat trick, Josh. Mm. Yeah, not a good way to finish the day, but nah, sensational goal scoring performance at least. Yeah, well, look, at least he's got that to talk about to all the <laughs> nurses at the hospital, I suppose. <laughs> um, the under 15s drew 1 1. Decisions didn't go their way and were unlucky not to come away with the win. And the goal scorer for that game was Mir Kotsinats. Under 16s had a bye, and the under 17s under with an unfortunate 3 1 loss up in the hot conditions up in Bendigo. So that's the junior recap for tonight. So, Josh, we're going to go around the grounds. Mm-hmm. So we've got, obviously, <laughs> Knights 1-0 win over Port. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, Dandy Thunder, Dandy City played out a nil-all draw. Oh, it was one-all draw. One oh, one-all draw. draw, sorry. Yes, yeah, one-all so draw. One-all draw. It was a last-minute penalty, in fact. Yeah, nine, 95th minute or something, yeah. wasn't it? Late drama in that one. Mm. Um, uh, we think it was Bernardo who converted it. Yep. At least he won the penalty anyway. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Danny Derby ends all square. All square. And now we cross over. Bentley defeated the Eastern Lions 3-1. Solid opening start to the year for Bentley. And they scored in the first minute. First minute. So, tough good start. To tough to do good. Bentley's looking the goods again this year. Avondale with a 2-1 win over Oakley. Now, Josh, you were at that game. Yes, left it very, very late. Mm. Uh so Oakley got a red card right after half time. There was yep. uh, a bit, it kicked off a little bit between Blake Carpenter and Matt Thurtell. And then uh, in the ensuing kind of melee, uh, the referee and linesman somehow picked out Tom Matthews as the only culpable <laughs> party. Uh, so he was given a straight red card. Uh, n- the fans were left none the wiser though, because Sportscast had it still on the halftime graphic. So nobody oh, saw... The drama, apart from those who were there in person, and, you know, I was there. I couldn't make out what happened. There were too many players, yeah. too many bodies in the way. And I think Oakley will have will have uh, trouble appealing that one because they, you just can't see what happened. Yeah, from too, even too the, many bodies uh, in the way. Even the sort of Zapruder film that's been discovered by uh, the cameraman <laughs> who managed to record it locally. They're missing six minutes. But Oakley managed to take the lead. Uh, Joe Guest scoring a header, the most diminutive player on the pitch, go mm. figure. But uh, after a nice cross from Joe Knowles. Um, and then Avondale against 10 men left it very, very late. Uh, Yusuf Ahmed... Forced an own goal with a nice run, and then in the 89th minute, uh, young Yazid Saeed came off the bench and uh, very composed square of the ball to Steph Valentini, who put it away finally after missing two one-on-ones throughout the 90 minutes mm. to win the match for Avondale in the 89th minute. And then stacks on, two players managed to injure each other <laughs> in the <laughs> celebrations. <laughs> they both are right, thankfully. But uh, yeah, Avondale, I think uh, you'd have to describe that as uh, relief. Yeah, you would look especially... Playing, playing the game with 10 men, second half. You really, really think they should have put that away mm. maybe a bit earlier. Yeah, yeah I don't think the, that Zoc and, and the rest of the coaching staff will be super happy with the performance. Um, no. Nah. I mean, they, you'll take the three points. Oh, but. any day of the week. And they were the players were going off. You could hear the celebrations from the change rooms very, very clearly <laughs> after the, the 90 minutes. But, yeah, yeah, it wasn't their best performance. Um, and we've got Hume City and Altona played out a two-all draw. Uh, nil all. No, that was nil all. So, uh, yeah, it should have been two for uh, Altona, but yeah. young Nick Sete managed to miss not one but two sitters in front of goal, and Michael that Weir made uh, one fantastic save to to keep Hume in it. So, Altona will be uh, a little bit the more disappointed side, I would have thought. Yeah, look, I, I managed to catch the highlights of that game. Altona were, look, to me, looked like the better team across the 90 minutes. A bit unfortunate not to come away with the result. They made some... Killer chances, especially coming down the coming down in the second half. So unfortunate for them, but hopefully Hume. Look, I think Hume and Altona will both be fairly decent teams in the league this year. Yeah, I picked them both to finish in the finals. Yeah. So you know, it was it was a pretty good match. I was a little bit 
preoccupied with a you know, seven goal thriller at Amy Park at the time. <laughs> so I'm not going to claim uh, any great insights aside from the highlights. But yeah, I think they'll both be up there. All right, now we've got uh, St Albans Dinamo with a 2 0 loss to Green Gully and Hellas with a 1 0 win over Heidelberg. Yeah, so Green Gully are the two cousins, the, the, the two Kamaras combining for the opening goal and then a, a thumping header from Daniel Jones late on uh, sealed it. I think they deserved that one. And Heidelberg South was uh, <laughs> it was a bit of an ugly game, to be honest, I have to say. I was commentating. It was compelling. There was a great crowd there. Yep. It was a good atmosphere. The action on the pitch looked, uh, aside from some early flourishes from Heidelberg, looked very much like two early season NPL Victoria sides yeah. still finding their groove. Uh, there was a lot of stop start, a lot of fouls and yellow cards and so forth. Uh, the goal, hint of controversy about it. Um, firstly, whether it crossed the line and secondly, uh, whether it was a foul on the goalkeeper. There is some uh, fan footage that South Melbourne have put up for, of another angle and having viewed that, I, I think it, it chicks the green box on uh, on both accounts and, and the referees made the right call. But yeah, pretty uh, sloppy goal for Heidelberg to concede, leaving their goalkeeper isolated against Harrison Sawyer like mm. that. And uh, they'll be very disappointed because they had way more of the ball um, South arguably edged the chances, but only on the counter-attack. They were so defensive. They're going to be very, very solid in the back line this season, but going forward, it's uh, it's pretty route one, to be honest. Yeah, look, we, we obviously, Knights played South in a friendly game a few weeks back, and they did look solid at the back, but I think that's going to be one of their problems this year. Apart from that sort of route one they've got going forward, they don't look like they're going to be creating too, too much this year. It's long balls to Sawyer and counter-attacks with Salados, and that's yeah. kind of it. So uh, hopefully they've got some more strings to their bow for their sake. But I look, I, I don't really see them as a as a top top six side this year if that's all they've got going. You know, you can grind out a lot of clean sheets and one nil yeah. wins. Maybe they'll get there. Maybe they'll get there. And look, I'm I'm sure all the Knights fans in out in the ether will be absolutely gutted if South Melbourne don't make the finals. <laughs> and then Knights with a one nil win on Friday night. We're going to go to a quick break. I'm going to leave you hanging for a bit, Knights fans, and we'll get back to that after our first break of the night. Hold on a minute. You're saying the Realme 7 Pro can now access 5G? Realme is quickly becoming one of the most popular and affordable phone brands. With a 6.4-inch display, 64-megapixel camera and 128 gigabytes of storage, we've found your next phone. Usually $5.99, it's now on sale for $4.79. And get a further 5% off when you use the code FNRME on any Realme product. Order the Realme 7 Pro now and get a pair of wireless earbuds, the Realme Buds Q, for free. That's realme.com, promo code FNRME. Do you spend too much of your valuable time in the kitchen? Chef Good delivers delicious gourmet meals directly to your door. With options as varied as green sambal chicken, Nonna's lasagna and harissa lamb tagine, you'll never get bored or go hungry. All FNR listeners can get 10% off their first Chef Good order. Just head to chefgood.com.au and use the code FNR10. Chefgood.com.au. It tastes good. And we're back, and for, look, a bit embarrassingly, but for the first time on my tenure on this radio show, Josh, we've got a win to talk about. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, Melbourne Knights, we got up 1-0 on Friday night at Port Melbourne. We had a bumper crowd out there, Knights fans absolutely everywhere. The buzz was electric. I think people were just wrapped to have football back. Josh, your first thoughts on the game? Well, firstly, I couldn't get in for the first few minutes because the line was so long outside. So fantastic for all the away fans mm. that uh, Knights way outnumbered the home crowd. Yeah, look, I mean, Port Melbourne, it's not a huge achievement, I suppose. But nah, still, it look, was a sensational, sensational atmosphere. For yeah, look, mate, we're absolutely buzzing. And game couldn't have started too much better for us. You know, yeah. Mo was looking absolutely lightning on that wing. Got the ball in and across to Albano. 1-0 up after 17 minutes. Smiles all around, Josh. Mo Sumar, uh, Sumayoro, I should say. Mm. 
far out. What a recruit. Mate, <laughs> like, what a pickup. I mean, what a pickup. Like, I, I can't speak highly enough of the guy. I was blown away. Like, no. you, you talked him up to me a little yeah. bit, said he was smashing it in preseason, and I went, oh, wait to see it with my own eyes. And look, yeah. and, and this is the problem. You do tend to get, we've had a few players across the last sort of few years smash it in preseason and then come up a bit short when the season actually kicks off. But Mo was looking the goods in the preseason, and he looked the goods and some on Friday night. I mean, not only is he like lightning quick and he's got really good feet, uh, you know, he's obviously got a bag of tricks and, and can beat anybody on the first step, send the wrong way, but he's also so strong. Like yeah. he just rides tackles. Yeah, he's got that it, upper body strength, which you kind of need in MPL Victoria. Like yeah. you're not really going to survive if you're really slightly built and you go down at the slightest touch. He just takes contact and keeps going. It's amazing. Yeah, he looked absolutely wonderful on that on the wing. And then obviously... Depending on how you look back at the replay, look, it was a it was a strong tackle for sure. Whether it was a straight red or not is look. But for me, it, it wasn't. But Nikola was Nikola Jurkovic walked with a straight red about mm. half an hour into the game, and the boys done unbelievably well to hold hold on to that one nil result with ten men for the better part of two thirds of that match, Josh. Absolutely. Well, we may as well talk about the red card yeah. because it was a tough one. I I was shocked when I saw the red card come out. Yep. I totally shocked. I went back and watched the replay, I don't know how many times, and I'm starting to come around to maybe what the referee saw. He did go in with two feet. Yep. He wins the ball with his, his left foot, but he makes contact with the player with his studs on his right yep. foot. It's kind of an orange card, right? Yeah, but the problem is that Nicola has this reputation now, and yep. referees will not give him the benefit of the doubt when it comes yep. to those kinds of tackles. Yeah, and look, unfortunately, you, you sort of do become a victim of that. Nicola is one of the he, – he, look, he doesn't mind a tackle. And, you know, that reputation sort of is known around the league now. I think referees are – other player that might have probably got away with the yellow there. Mm. Nicola, unfortunately, is not going to be one of those. So, look, it is what it is. We're going we're gonna to bounce forward. I'm sure Nicola's going to bounce back. He, he played pretty well up until that yeah. point throughout the match. The whole, whole team had. But – you know, we'll see him back in a few weeks and not much else we can really say about the red card, Josh. Yeah, look, it's it's an unfortunate one. But you look at the performance in the opening sort of 25, 30 minutes for mm. the red card and it was sensational. Uh, we had obviously Sumayoro and Albano, Mikulic combining really, really well. Yeah. The team was playing with this great hunger and intensity. They were pressing really high. Yeah. I loved the kind of organization uh, of the press and how much work has clearly gone into yeah. that in preseason. I mean, credit to Bebic. Once you get a red card, of course, you that just you can't press. It, it, it just numerically doesn't make no. sense for you to. So they had to completely change the strategy. But I would still argue that Knights were the better team for the first half. And it was only the second half where it kind of went into bunker into your yeah. shell and, and defending the lead. Yeah, look, and that's, I think, one of the biggest things you can take out of the game. That first sort of 15 to 20 minutes, that spell we put together was was special to watch, really. Um, you can really see what's, what Steve Babich and the coaching staff have been looking to put together over a preseason. You can see they've got a clear plan in how they want to play, how they want to press, you know, how certain players across the pitch are going to tuck in and move out mm. given cert certain circumstances. So credit to him and all the coaching staff and everyone involved for getting the boys up and ready for the game one. They had a clear game plan and it was absolutely, it was working without a doubt through the first 25. Port were shook. They were not, yeah. not up to the level of intensity that Knights brought in the opening 25 minutes. Yeah. And, uh, and their first half was, was pretty poor. Like I was uh, bigging them up a little bit on the show after what I saw in the preseason yeah. game, but they were playing out from the back against Oakley under very little pressure. Oakley yeah. don't really press, really press into the final high. third. They will press in the center of the park, but yeah, not, 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 not high. high up. And that's really disrupted their possession play. And they only really gained a foothold in the second half where Knights had to sit off and, and absorb pressure just to conserve energy, really. But uh, credit to the coaching staff for making the adjustment as well. Um, yeah. Brought in, um, is it Petrov to play yep. uh, in the center of the defense? And, yep. and young Jack Marth playing at left back. Is that his debut? 
Yeah. Uh, or did he play last? No, he might have. Got, I think he might have played a game or two for yeah, the okay. seniors already. Well, uh, anyway, he acquitted himself very, very well playing yeah. out of position as a, a right-footed left back. But yeah. I thought he just scrapped and clawed for every ball. There was one where he's act- he'd actually had his legs taken out from under him and managed to head the ball away on the regardless yeah. on the floor, which is just, you know, takes after yeah, look, his old man the, a little bit. Yeah, and look, the, the credit goes to the entire squad right, right across from, from the goalkeeper forward. And while we're talking about the goalkeeper, let's talk about that goalkeeper, mate. Ooh. Mate, what a debut. It's crazy. What a there debut. There was nothing getting past that guy. Nah. I was standing behind the, his goal in the second half, and like the level of communication that was going on, yeah. um, not just the saves that he made, but the instructions that were being barked out to the defense, yeah. uh, maturity beyond his years mm. and especially in a new squad to immediately just assume that level of responsibility as yeah. goalkeeper to marshal this back line, which needed marshalling under the pressure. Yeah. And especially yes, he gave away a penalty. Half. Yes, he gave away a penalty, immediately makes up for it and saves it. There was nothing getting past Tom Mate, Manos that Manos night. Manos had an absolute blinder. And look, for me, if if anyone's asking me who, who my best, best man of the match was, I think it was definitely him. Mm, I agree. You know, that second half he put together, not just the penalty save, and yeah, all right, he shouldn't have given away the penalty to start with, but, you know, he saved it straight after, so that's a wipe. Let it go. It is what it is. And, you know, we were speaking before the show, obviously Port should have had another penalty. Like, yeah, <laughs> obviously. Look, from where I was standing, I, was, I didn't have a good view of it, but watching back on the replay... Uh, we got away with one there. I can tell you, it was directly in front of me and I couldn't believe it. (laughs) I was laughing because the Duggan just got absolutely taken out, you know, massive contact on his foot and, you know, the poor players are in disbelief. Knights maybe got away with them. Maybe a little bit of a square up for the red card, maybe. But we'll take it <laughs> every day of the week. And, you and know twice on Friday. And it doesn't matter because Manos would have saved it anyway. He would have saved it anyway, <laughs> mate. He would have saved it anyway. There's no way the penalty's going. Mate, the form he was in on Friday and not just the penalty save either. There was a couple of other good chances Port had, you know, sort of in that 16-yard box, one he parried onto the crossbar, one he put onto the post. He was immense on Friday. But, again, going across the squad, you know, unfortunately Mikulic had to be subbed off early. Yep. You know, he was playing pretty well coming in. But, you know, unfortunately you get a red card, someone, someone's got to make room to, f- to fill, that, fill that hole at centre back, and he did. But the whole squad, the, the level of fight, Passion from from everyone, from the keeper forward, was was phenomenal. Fighting mm. for every loose ball, we kept our shape. Well, even in patches in the second half, when with there was a few times Wetzlut picked up the ball, and we still looked dangerous going forward. Mm. I, I can't speak highly enough for the performance on Friday night. And you know, um, Alan Webb had a great chance as well to make it too. Yeah, I, I just remember that. It, yeah. he, he got under it a bit, but you know that, that's still threatening to seal definitely, the game definitely. with ten men. Sensational. Unbelievable. I, I can't speak highly enough about it. And mate, it just feels good to get a, get the fir- first first win away for the year locked up in round one. We'll take it. Absolutely. And we're going to speak to Nicola later, uh, obviously about sending off, but also just the character of the squad and everything. Yeah. And we'll, we'll preview the upcoming games as well. But I, I'm sure mentally for that entire squad to get three points on the board in that fashion, yeah, it's to not- have to fight and scrap and claw for every second of that second half. Yeah. Um, you know, you had Paul Zovac here chain smoking out of nerves, just <laughs> completely buggering his voice for the show. All the supporters were on edge, but they, they kept the atmosphere yeah. going. They kept every save, every tackle, massive roar yeah. going up. It was Mate. it was fantastic. And that, that is a character building victory. That is maybe massive. not how it was scripted to go no. in round one, but no. it is a huge win. But look, without look, if if I'm honest, looking back, if that if Nicola doesn't get sent off where he gets sent off, I, I could have very easily seen us winning that game by one or another two or three goals. Yeah. Three nil easy. Three, that could have been a very easy three nil result, you know. The the way the squad was put together, you could see the plan they had going into the game. Credit to everyone top to bottom around the club for that performance round one. So Knights fans, we're gonna go for a quick break. Mm-hmm. And then we will go in depth a little bit more about a few other features of the game. We'll have a quick chat to Nikola Jurkovic and we'll preview the upcoming fixture against Andy this Friday. Building or renovating a home? Sick of searching through showrooms looking for the perfect fittings and fixtures in your budget? Renovatorstore.com.au has over a thousand products to choose from. Browse through the catalogue in the convenience and comfort of your own home. From basins and shower sets to lighting and floorboards, Renovator Store has it all. 
For a limited time, FNR listeners can get a further 5% off by using the promo code FNR at the checkout. Take your reno budget further. Go to renovatorstore.com.au, promo code FNR. Hold on a minute. You're saying the Realme 7 Pro can now access 5G? Realme is quickly becoming one of the most popular and affordable phone brands. With a 6.4 inch display, 64 megapixel camera and 128 gigabytes of storage, we've found your next phone. Usually $599, it's now on sale for $479. And get a further 5% off when you use the code FNRME on any Realme product. Order the Realme 7 Pro now and get a pair of wireless earbuds, the Realme Buds Q, for free. That's realme.com, promo code FNRME. Whether you're a land developer, in local government or a service authority, Lanco Group will help you get your job done on time and in a cost-effective manner. Lanco Group provides superior civil engineering and advisory services by creating, communicating and delivering sustainable, efficient solutions. For all your infrastructure requirements associated with residential, commercial or industrial development projects, visit our website lancogroup.com.au or give us a call today on 1300 152 626. This is where Argentina can be very patient indeed. I've watched their youth teams do this. Just play the ball endlessly around the edge of their opponent's penalty area, then suddenly break with devastating consequences. Saviola, Cambiasso. Cambiasso! They've done it! They've done it! And scored a fantastic goal! How many passes did they put together there? You'd need a calculator. FNR, Football Nation Radio. And we're back, Knights fans. So, Josh, I'm going to pre look, look just, just off the top of your head. I'm going to run a bit of a segment this year. I think Zovi's 3 2 1 for the play, best players on the pitch for the Friday night. Mm hmm. Who would you say would your, be your 3 2 and 1 for Friday? 3 2 1. I'm going to go Manos for three. Yeah. Uh, Mo Sumeoro for two. And yeah, why not? I'll give it to Jack Marth. One vote. I thought he did well. Yeah, definitely. Jack Jack played a great game on Friday. And for me, I think, look, I, I don't think I can argue with Manos. Manos as, mm. as your three. He was absolutely immense. Mo, I'll give Mo the two and I'll give Bryce, Bryce the one. I think yep. it. Coming in like first game as first game in captain captain of the club to have your centre back partner sent off early, he was immense in in terms of marshalling that back four, marshalling the the midfield in front of him, you know, and just his leadership as a captain in that first game to get really thrown in the deep end half an hour in like that man down, especially that second half we're getting pressed pretty heavily that last sort of ten minutes or so he was immense in marshalling that back four. Yeah, huge. I mean, it has to go to one of one of the members of the defence, I think. So yeah. take your pick for the for the one vote. Um, but you know, it's going to be hard to break into this team now. Um, aside from the obviously forced changes due to suspension, this yeah. is a is a pretty good pretty good formula. Look, and our under twenties got a got a good four 0 win on on Saturday against against Port as well. But we had about three, five or six senior players dropping into the twenties on the weekend. You know. Um, the young bloke Trevor had an absolute ripper. Felipe played well. You know, there's players in the 20s now who are making a legitimate case that want to be pushing back up. Our, well, the seniors that they got a game in the 20s on the weekend. This is we've got a pretty complete squad looking mm. going forward into the year. You know, and I think for one of the first times in the you know quite a few years now, the coach had 20 20 odd players to pick from. Nearly our whole our whole senior squad was was fit and rearing to go for Friday night, which is fast. It's massive. Having, having, a, having those sort of headaches for, for the coach, I'm, I'd be happy if we had those all year, Josh. Yeah, and it's only going to get more intense with more players coming back in terms of fitness and so forth. Matt, Matthew Breeze, Trevor yeah. Vetslut, obviously he's just come off a plane basically yeah, out of hotel quarantine. So, you know, he, I think it was a bit tough for him 
trying to adapt to the pace of the game, but he's going to get fitter and we know his pedigree. So, yeah. you know, he's going to contend as well. Um, so massive competition, especially in midfield, but uh, across the park. Yeah, massive. And look, we, we wouldn't be the club we are without our fans. Our fans were immense mm. on Friday night, Josh. You were saying yourself, I reckon probably 85% of the crowd was was in some sort of nice paraphernalia, whether it be a jacket, scarf or something. What's that like as an outsider looking in, knowing when the Knights rock up, we're basically taking over your stadium, Josh? <laughs> it's unreal. I mean, I was uh, sitting for a lot of the first half with uh, media man Dan in the the box that's yeah. never been opened before, the dusty <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Port Melbourne media box with the kind of cage grate on the outside mm-hmm. to stop the windows breaking when the ball flies at us. And <laughs> I, it was obviously next to the Knights fans, but we had, you know, no windows open, yeah. door shut, and we could still barely hear each other. <laughs> like, it was fantastic, oh, drums going. It was it was so good. And, you know, I, I ran into quite a few people who've come on the show or I've met down yeah. at Knights games, and they were – everyone was so happy because, like, the NPL is back. Yeah. And how, how much we've missed it. You know, I, I saw a lot of people you know, sort of – eavesdropping on conversations in the line because I was yeah. on my own when I walked in and you know new people new fans coming yeah. to games as well like people bringing new people and they were asking questions and stuff and then I had like the stream up on my phone because I couldn't really see inside yeah. the ground for the first sort of two or three minutes and and they were like looking over my shoulder watching the game on my phone they didn't realize it was streamed live <laughs> so it's great to see new people there as yeah. well and obviously all like the people coming back and, and being reconverted to to watching Knights play each and every week. Obviously, Port's a, a pretty easy place to get to, yeah. and that, that always helps. Yeah, look, but that, that I think just help. the enthusiasm for NPL football across the league, the, the yeah. crowds were fantastic. The crowds were fantastic but across let me tell you, no, no one generated an atmosphere like the Knights fans did on Friday. I went to three NPL games yeah. over the weekend, and it was just no comparison. That's always good to hear. <laughs> and look, you know, give, given the – obviously, everyone knows we've missed, missed football for the better part of a year now – we had a few people flying from Sydney. We had people come from interstate, well, not not just Sydney, all, all over Australia to come down and watch us on the Friday night. The streaming numbers were through the roof. People, you haven't seen at games in a few years. Mm. And that, that was a big thing for me. It's, you're bumping into people who might not be, they're not the people that come week in, week out, but, you know, used to come to games. Now there's a bit of interest in getting them back into games. So thanks to everyone who came out on Friday. The support was immense. And... Let's hope we can get an even bigger crowd in this Friday night. Absolutely. Uh, speaking to fans, uh, Facebook Live comments coming through as always. Pashko with the uh, weekly sack Tom Lu- Lukic <laughs> hashtag. <laughs> yeah. He also says Zovac looking hairy as ever. Hashtag snack life. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, thanks, Pashko. You're beautiful. Nick just with the <laughs> Juvelier Nasa Gra- Melbourne. Melbourne Grazia. Grazia. Yeah. Always, uh, good. always good. And we always appreciate those comments coming in. So all caps or no all caps, don't care. Uh, Steven says Manos is a great pickup. Will save you twelve points this season. And well, I don't doubt it. To be Stephen, honest, Stephen, I definitely agree. Um, he, for me, he's our pickup of the off season. Mm. You know, the difference he he potentially makes in terms of what what he offers in in leadership experience. Obviously, playing at the top level at Sydney United for the last five years, they've they've always been up there or thereabouts in terms of playing in grand finals around the top half of the table. That experience is going to bring in from a winning culture like that is is going to be a big thing in terms of us trying to change. Look, there's n- our average results over the last few years. To have someone coming in with that winning pedigree and that winning mentality into the change room is is massive. Uh, Sam says, 21 for Port Melbourne had a shocking haircut and shocking game. <laughs> yeah, well, look, there, there were rumours actually that a few comments from the Knights fans may have may have got him dragged because <laughs> he got absolutely rattled in the first five minutes. A few comments from the boys over the over the fence and didn't look like the same player after. So, look, I think the Knights fans have got their first scalp for the season <laughs> and it took 45 minutes. Was that the right back? Yeah, it was the oh, right back. Oh, he's getting roasted. <laughs> oh, look, between, between Mo and 35, 40 blokes really hammering you over the fence, I don't think he was having a good Friday night, mate. No, he was looking scattershot. I, I, he didn't play well in the friendly I watched either against no. Oakley. He was getting torn up by Ryan Pachkowski. So, yeah, uh, uh, look, he's got so something not, to uh, adjust to and acclimatise to in yeah. NPL Victoria, that's for sure. We're not sure if it was Mo or his dodgy haircut, but whatever it was, something got him dragged. But yeah, well done to the fans. First goal for the year, Josh. Well, I'm hearing that Nikola Jurkovic is ready to talk to us. So let's take a quick break. Quick break and we'll jump in with Nikola and then preview this week's game against Dandenong Thunder. 
Are you looking to change your destiny in life? Be your own boss? Start your own business? If you are, you need people who understand your needs and are committed to helping you make it happen. At DKP & Co Chartered Accountants, we are more than just accountants. We are business advisors, taxation consultants, and strategists that specialized in setting up businesses. We understand the client and give them the very best customized advice and strategies to achieve their goals. Visit our website, dkpco.com.au, or give us a call today on 03 9023 9370. Fast, proactive, personal. That's DKP & Co Chartered Accountants. Do you spend too much of your valuable time in the kitchen? Chef Good delivers delicious gourmet meals directly to your door. With options as varied as green sambal chicken, Nonna's lasagna and harissa lamb tagine, you'll never get bored or go hungry. All FNR listeners can get 10% off their first Chef Good order. Just head to chefgood.com.au and use the code FNR10. Chefgood.com.au. It tastes good. Hold on a minute. You're saying the Realme 7 Pro can now access 5G? Realme is quickly becoming one of the most popular and affordable phone brands. With a 6.4 inch display, 64 megapixel camera and 128 gigabytes of storage, we've found your next phone. Usually $599, it's now on sale for $479. And get a further 5% off when you use the code FNRME on any Realme product. Order the Realme 7 Pro now and get a pair of wireless earbuds, the Realme Buds Q, for free. That's realme.com, promo code FNRME. Do you spend too much of your valuable time in the kitchen? Chef Good delivers delicious gourmet meals directly to your door. With options as varied as green sambal chicken, Nonna's lasagna and harissa lamb tagine, you'll never get bored or go hungry. All FNR listeners can get 10% off their first Chef Good order. Just head to chefgood.com.au and use the code FNR10. Chefgood.com.au. It tastes good. Building or renovating a home? Sick of searching through showrooms looking for the perfect fittings and fixtures in your budget? Renovatorstore.com.au has over a thousand products to choose from. Browse through the catalogue in the convenience and comfort of your own home. From basins and shower sets to lighting and floorboards, Renovator Store has it all. For a limited time, FNR listeners can get a further 5% off by using the promo code FNR at the checkout. Take your reno budget further. Go to renovatorstore.com.au, promo code FNR. Whether you're a land developer, in local government, or a service authority, Lanco Group will help you get your job done on time and in a cost-effective manner. Lanco Group provides superior civil engineering and advisory services by creating, communicating, and delivering sustainable, efficient solutions. For all your infrastructure requirements associated with residential, commercial or industrial development projects, visit our website lancogroup.com.au or give us a call today on 1300 152 626. Are you looking to change your destiny in life? Be your own boss? Start your own business? If you are, you need people who understand your needs and are committed to helping you make it happen. At DKP & Co Chartered Accountants, we are more than just accountants. We are business advisors, taxation consultants and strategists that specialised in setting up businesses. We understand the client and give them the very best customised advice and strategies to achieve their goals. Visit our website dkpco.com.au or give us a call today on 03 9023 9370. Fast, proactive, personal. That's DKP and Co Chartered Accountants.
Welcome back, Knights fans, and we are now joined by club vice captain Nikola Jurkovic. Nikola, can How you? Me, boys? Nikola, mate, what's going on? How are you feeling, mate? Uh, yeah, not too bad, mate. Just had a, just come back from a training session, so a little bit sore. Ah, good, good, good to hear the boys are all up up and about training again. How so, Nikola? Talk to me, mate. How's the vibe in the change room after after that wonderful win on Friday night? No, it's, it's it's unreal from um from Friday night all the way to to now. It's been a really good um, vibe around the club through to the to the community, to the fans, to the players. It's a it's a real um, buzz around. We don't want to get too um, carried away too quickly, but um, we'll just yeah, take it one game at a time. Now, look, mate, we've got you on. We're going to have to talk about it. The sending off. Um, what are your sort of thoughts thoughts about the incident on Friday night? Oh, look, mate, it, it is what it is. I just got to. I, I don't want to make too much, too money. Uh, I don't want to put my opinion there. To be honest with you, I yeah, no, that's fair stuff. enough, mate. That's fair enough. Yeah. Um, so, look, club's coming into a game against Andy Thunder this Friday. Uh, what are your sort of thoughts thoughts going into the game? What's what's the vibe like in the training room coming into Friday night? No, no, look, mate. Obviously, coming off off a win, we're we're confident. We're um. Uh, we're excited, uh, but like I said, just game by game. We don't look in uh, through the weeks ahead. It's just game by game. We prepared for Port Melbourne for a full week, and then we prepared for Danny Thunder for a full week. So we'll just go from there. Nicholas, Josh here. Uh, it was a really tough, hard-fought win. Obviously, a bit of disappointment for you personally, but it must be a huge morale boost for the players to come through that kind of barrage in the second half and survive, uh, keep it, the opposition at bay and, and pull off what was a, a pretty famous win? Yeah, I think that's, that's it was a huge result. I think in the past with, um, with us, the last few years, we would have bottled that game, I thought. So um, I think we're maturing as a team. I think Beavers gave us that, um, that hurdle, I say, that just that belief that we can do anything. So it's good. Yeah, look, Nicola, we had a bit of a chat at the season launch last week, a uh, week before, sorry, and, um, you know, sort of, you could see now what you were talking about then in terms of what Bebic and the coaching staff are trying to put together in terms of our game plan coming into Friday. Now, obviously, that's going to change week to week, but just sort of, sp- if you can speak to speak to a bit about what that sort of prep for that first game, coming into that first game was like. Yeah, I think through this whole pre-season, it's been, since I've been here for the last five years, it's been a completely different approach to any other coaches I've had here. Um, it's just it's uh, playing the ball out of the back. It's um, not as direct as we usually were. Uh, we're going forward with intent. Um, when we lose the ball, that first five seconds we're pouncing. So those little things are helping us uh, in, in a big way. And some of the fans are echoing your thoughts in the comments, Nicola. James says, complete turnaround in our style of play. Bebic deserves a lot of credit. We're much more watchable this season compared to the way we played last season before the league was cancelled. I see that pressing from the front and playing on the front foot seems to be a real focus, especially judging on those first 25 minutes on, on Friday. Is that something you've worked on in pre-season, the high press? Yeah, it is. Like with the departure of um, Hamish Watson last year, we've got much more of a, a quick sort of forward line. Mm. So we've got to utilise that and um, yeah, we've changed our game style just to suit that front four and we look dangerous at the moment. But like I said, we can't get too carried away. It's first round of the season and we're just going to take a week by week. Now, some of the new recruits really shone on Friday night. Um, I was particularly taken with the goalkeeper, Thomas Manos, who saved a penalty, of course, but his leadership at the back really stood out to me in the second half. Uh, what's he been like to work with in pre-season? Oh, yeah, you could just tell as soon as he came in his first training session, he was just his class. He's um, not just as a goalkeeper, as a person, as a, just putting that vibe in the change room. He's just an all-round really good person and... Um, as a keeper, you saw for yourself, he's, he's, he's unreal. He's going to save us a few points this season. Well, 12 points was uh, 12 points what one commenter prediction. told us. I'm not sure about 12, <laughs> but I'm sure he'll save plenty of points. Uh, what about Mohamed Sumayoro? He had mm. an outstanding debut, got an assist as well, and uh, seemed to be taking on players left, right, and centre. Uh, how hard is he to come up against in a training session? Oh, yeah, mate. He's very, very unpredictable. I was um, lucky enough to play with him with my little stint in Adelaide yeah. in the off-season, and... Um, He's, yeah, he's, he's just, he's got that flair about him. He's exciting. Um, I think a lot of um, opposition teams are going to find him hard to, hard to take. And Nicola, just working off that, another player that's come over from your little stint in Adelaide's uh, striker, 
Webby. Now, he, he had a good chance to score on Friday. Unfortunately, didn't go in. But just talk to the sort of difference he's going to bring in to that front line as opposed to a, a player like Watson last year. Yeah, he just, I think him and Hamish are complete, just chalk and cheese. They're different players. Um, Hamish was a hold up striker. Webby's more that sort of play where he gets get him behind. Um, I think it's going to take a while. You know, different leagues will take a while to adjust. But I think he, once he starts firing, he's, he's not going to stop scoring. And what did you make of the atmosphere on Friday night? Sensational attendance, and uh, I thought the Knights fans really brought it on uh, on week one. Yeah, I think I think we've got the best supporters in Australia. To be honest with you, um, there's no doubt about that. Um, I think it was just a relief for everyone. It's been a long time since everyone's seen each other. Uh, Knights is more a family club, and um, yeah, we, we pride ourselves on that. And it was just you know, it was cool. It was a buzz. We scored that goal. That roar was. But yeah, us players had goosebumps. So. Um, it's what you play for, and we'll hopefully we get another win from next week, uh, this week. So, well, speaking of this coming week, mm. obviously last season's game didn't end in the the best fashion for the Knights with the the late sending off and the free kick. I'm sure everybody remembers. So, I want to get, mate. banish that memory as soon as possible. Have you had a chance to? Talk about uh, this this Standy Thunder game as a group and what you're preparing to face because without Barnes this season, they're a completely different side. Yeah, well, I've heard we've spoke a little bit about it, but I think that's more later in the week when we start, you know, looking at, at, at videos and stuff like that. I think tonight was more just a reflection of, of Friday's game, and um, yeah, just a bit, just a session today uh, on Denny Thunder. We, I don't know much about him. I know they lost Barnes. I think he's back in back overseas. Obviously, he was a vital player for them last year, but you know, obviously they've got a replacement. It could be just as good. We don't know, but we just got to prepare for anything and. Just get a just get our first win at home this season. Look, Nicola, thanks for your time. Uh, great win by the boys on Friday. Echo that sentiment back into the change rooms, and we're all going to be behind you Friday night, mate. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time, mate. Nikola Yurkovic joining us, uh, vice captain of the club, of course. And did you hear that? Best fans in the country. Best fans. Look, mate. Look, it's been a sneaky suspicion of mine for a while, but it's always good to hear it back from your players. And look, just speaking personally to that, like that when that first Croatia chant went up on the weekend, I had goosebumps all over me, mate. It was, it's it's for me, it's something special, mate. Like mm. to see that, unlike that, people you haven't seen in a while, fans all back up and about, the vibe around the place, Knights fans absolutely everywhere. It was immense. Yeah, we've even got Anna Shuvich coming through in the comments. He says, "You and Nikola uh, kisses you, legend." That's a Google Translate from Croatian in the, <laughs> in the Facebook Live comments. So uh, he's got lots of fans in the community. Yeah, he does. And then as, as a former player, it's good good to see him coming coming on and having a having a listen to the night train. Really showing support for the club. So now obviously, let's Josh. Let's talk about the game this Friday. We've got Dandy Thunder at home. Club's first home game of the year. Um, look. Dandy, look, a bit of a different look about him this year. Obviously, no Brandon Barnes is going to hurt them up up top. One of the better strikers in the league over the last few years. And I yeah. think, look, it gives us a real opportunity to to start start strong this year with, with two wins two wins on the trot from our first two, Joshy. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've uh, sought out the commentators from the Dandy Derby. I didn't see the game myself, but I've uh, sought out Chris Gleason and Damian Kulash for their insights on, on yep. what they saw. And, uh, yeah, they, their consensus was that Danny Thunder are not really fit enough in the uh, first round. They started really strong like a house on fire in the first 20 minutes or so, and then they kind of ran out of gas a little bit and we had to rely a little bit more on transition moments in the second half. And they eventually did they get that equaliser, of course. Yep. Uh, Nahuel Bonada is a man to watch out for. They're Argentinian, I believe, South yep. America in any way, uh, winger that they've signed in the off-season. The striker they've got to replace Barnes, uh, Josh O'Hanlon, is more of a target man hold-up sort of yep. player. So he's going to try and play with his back to go and play in their fast wingers. Play in the wingers. Uh, so he's not going to turn and run at defenders like Barnes. Or he's a completely different striker. Oh, and, look, and thank God, yeah. to be honest, because I was a bit <laughs> sick of Barnes pick. Or he's been one of the most frustrating strikers to play against because... Especially last year, I mean, he was getting hammered for the better part of 90 minutes and then absolutely mugged us all off when he when he scored that free kick, pulls his top off and he's slapping his gut. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just really happy I'm not going to be seeing that this year, Josh. I think uh, most of the viewers of NPL Victoria live streams are happy they won't be seeing Brandon Barnes' gut on the... Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, but I think it's a 3-4-3 three, three from what I can surmise with the yep. hold-up striker and then two quick wingers. Um, that back three is looking pretty 
pretty good. Um, yeah, Mimetti, Ashcroft, and Paul Wilson. And I mean, I think you can see that's sort of why they've pushed into that back three. They know they're not going to be scoring quite as mm. many goals with our Barnes up front this year, so they do have to stay solid at the back. If they're leaking a couple of early goals, you're not going to have Barnes to pull you out with a hat trick every week. Yeah, exactly. So they're going to have strength in other areas. Paul Wilson, really, really good centre back. I uh, was banging the drum for him to get an A League chance actually on Twitter when uh, there were some injuries, but he he hasn't got the look in yet. He's moved over from Hume City. Uh, yeah. Obviously, was a member of uh, the team that was looking real real crash hot in the uh, in the first uh, five rounds of so last year before the season was cancelled. He's gone over to Adelaide, so I'm sure Nicola will have played against him. Yeah. And then back to Victoria with Thunder. He's a major coup uh, as a signing because not only is he a good defender, he's got this really calm presence about him. He's not uh, a really physical centre-back like Tannen is, who's yeah. still at Hume City. He's more of that kind of controlling leader Control, at composed. the back, composed. He's very good on the ball. So He's going to be, I think, a focus of the high press. I'm sure Bebich will do much more homework than I have. But yeah. <laughs> he's going to be one that you're going to want to close down and stop him from from spraying those passes out to start the counter attacks. Can you because you can kind of see him picking out the wingers or, or the striker with with uh, good long range passing. So he's he's one to watch out for. But I think their strengths are more defensive than they are in the yeah. offensive end. It's going to be the Knights taking the initiative and trying to break down Thunder. Yeah, look, that's the thing. We we're, we we're proactive early last week. We're going to be looking to do the same thing this week. Obviously, like that first half an hour is going is going to be key. You know, if we can break them down early, it's going to force them to open up. So, Josh, we'll get a quick score prediction for you from for Friday night. Score prediction. Well, I think the Knights are good for it, I have to say. Um, keep all 11 men in the park, fingers crossed. Fingers and crossed. And I'm going to go 2-0. Mate, you took the words out of my mouth. I'm going for a 2-0 <laughs> win as well this Friday. And look, we'd, we are going to need to have a quick chat about membership. Knights fans, it's absolutely vital to our club that it, we are a member-based club. Our mm. members... Our members keep our club afloat. They are, you know, they make the decisions at the end of the day of who's, you know, we're a member-driven club, mm. Josh. So if as many people as can on Friday night come down to the game, playing at home, 7.30 kickoff, it's going to be, weather looks like it's going to hold out, should be should be pretty good. Come down, buy a membership. This is a beautiful T-shirt you get as a gold member. That is our most popular membership, so I'd encourage everyone to jump on one of those. But there are other options if that's not what you want to go for. Now, Josh, what do you reckon? That's oh, nice. I've been eyeing off, yeah. I've got to say. Look, mate, shout out to our club merch slinger, Jerome. He's done an absolute wonderful – him and Dan have done a wonderful job again on the club merchandise this year, which, again, possibly a bit biased. I think we've got the best merch in the league, mate. I can't disagree. That's not me saying that as Josh hosting the night train. That's yeah. just me as a neutral MPL Victoria observer. Best, best merch, best kits. Yeah. But like I, I treasure the uh, FFA Cup kit that I've I've bought. Mate, that, that was. I a didn't get that kit. as a freebie, by the way. I paid for that, <laughs> and I and it was worth every cent. Mate, the cracker kit in the red and the black looked yeah. to me. Per, personally, the black was. Yeah, that's the one I went yeah, for. Yeah, look, that's that's the one I went for. But the red one looked great as well. There's some good work being done around the club in terms of merchandise. So everyone come on down, buy a membership, get involved. We've got a massive game this Friday night. Knights are getting up 2-0. Gee it up. Come on down and we'll see you all next week to talk about a, another Knights result. Thank you, Knights fans. Enjoy your Monday. We'll see you all at the club on Friday night. I think the Knights, their time has arrived. I think last week, the 10-man performance in the preliminary final was absolutely exceptional. So I'm going for the Knights. But when you talk of Knights, it's a real fighting team. Muscock into the back of the net. Melbourne Knights take the lead, 1-0. Melbourne Knights will win the Doherty Cup. for a finals berth, that's it! The Croatia fans salute the goal that could be so vital.